we'll get the meeting uh, going for this evening. Remind everyone that the, the meeting is live streamed on the web and anyone can watch it uh, by visiting the council website afterwards and picking up the, the meeting. Uh, prior to the open session, it was moved by Councillor Burden and seconded by Councillor McCann that pursuant to Section 239, 2 and 3 of the Municipal Act, SO 2001, C25 is amended. Council of the Corporation of the Town of, Town of Perry Sound moved to a meeting closed to the public in order to address matters pertaining to see a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land for municipal or local board purpose, local board property, and E, litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board, true proper, two property matters, zoning compliance matter. That was carried, and the meeting wasn't fully conducted, so uh, we will be meeting after the open session to finish the closed, closed session. <clears throat> As part of National Indigenous Peoples Day, uh, this Friday, June 21st, I'd like to acknowledge before commencing this evening's meeting that we are on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabeg people under the Robinson-Huron Treaty and the Métis that have traveled the waterways of, of our area. And then we have um, additions and prioritization. I will say that Resolution 7-1, uh, Declaration of Perry Sound of uh, supporting uh, Indigenous Peoples Day on uh, June 21st, so that will be added to, to the agenda. Are there any other additions or prioritization? Seeing none, and if something crops up, I guess we'll deal with it. Mover and seconder for the agenda. Councillor McCann, Councillor Keith. That the Council agenda for June 18th, 2019 be approved as amended. All in favor? That's carried. Any disclosure of pecuniary interest or the general nature thereof? Councillor Bachman. Okay, any others? Seeing none? Okay, so we have a present, there is a presentation that needs to be made, and so if I could have Chief Thompson come up to the podium. Chief Thompson doesn't know this, but I asked if he could at least look very dapper tonight, and he's dressed up in his uniform, which is really, really good. Um, this came in the mail last week and it, with no real information, and then there was a follow-up uh, certificate afterwards. But... Um, uh, Dave has been awarded an Exemplary Service Medal uh, from the uh, federal government and the Governor General of Canada in recognition of 20 years of loyal and exemplary service to the public safety in Canada. And apparently I get to pin this on you. <laughs> and you put it right here. Right, right on the pocket? Yep. Okay. Try not to poke myself and leave any blood. Or me. Or you, yeah. Good material. Uh, we got this. Maybe. Good thing I got my glasses on. I'm going to let you play That's with fine. that. And that That'll be just perfect. Good the way that it is there. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And it, it comes with that certificate. So do you want to say anything? Because I will say that thank you for your many years of service and, and everything that you've done for the municipality, not only our municipality, but for the whole area in mutual aid and you know your previous life in Seguin Township as well as fire chief there. But you're also our director, for, director of emergency services, which looks after land ambulance for the district of Perry Sound. So you have gone above and beyond. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, since you're actually going to let me speak publicly, which is 
pleasant. Um, I just want to say that, uh, you know, I'm lucky I have the best job in the world. That's what I always tell everyone. And uh, a lot of what makes that so special is the uh, emergency service workers that I get to work with, the paramedics and the police officers and the dispatchers, and especially the firefighters. They make my day a joy, and I love coming to work every day. Thank you. Uh, this question is for um, Mr. Harris. I'd just like to know if you can give us an update on where we're at with our strategic plan. Question. Yeah, through the through the mayor, um, staff uh, down at to the manager level have been working on the strategic plan that was updated by council. I believe it was approved in 2015. Um, we've taken a look at that. Uh, staff have a lot of insights with the various associations we belong to, the legislation that may be coming down, and a lot of things that are gonna be impacting the municipality. So we've been trying to uh, build in, uh, buy in support and, and identify changes that we, at least from the staff perspective, think are necessary. Um, the next step is to bring forward, um, probably in the, for the July meeting, we could uh, either to a council meeting, if council wishes, or set up a special meeting uh, to discuss the, uh, strategic plan and get in, input from uh, members of the public. So that's uh, the July time frame works if, if that works for council. Um, I'd just like to make a motion in regards to um, direction for um, setting up a public meeting for strategic plan. Okay. Well, for council, yes. Thank you. I think that's a great idea, and obviously we, we've done that in our last few strategic plan. My only concern is the summer date. I know that uh, around the council table there's holidays, that uh, people aren't here. I, I don't know if we should put that off to a September date. Just putting that out there for discussion. I support a September date. I'd be, I'd be fine with that.
have a few questions. First for uh, Chief Thompson, congratulations. Can you give us a, an update on what's uh, transpiring at uh, the St. Joseph's Hospital property, uh, Chief, please? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, everyone's noticed uh, certain activity at the St. Joe's Hospital site, the former St. Joe's Hospital site. Uh, there was some damage to the building that's occurred due to its uh, lack of maintenance of the building. Uh, two um, by law enforcement um, issued two orders for that particular site. One was the fencing. Everyone can see that the fencing is up and that the uh, owner of the building uh, did move in a timely fashion to do that. The other issue is a directive to supply an uh, engineering report on the stability of the entire building. Uh, this has not been completed at this point. Uh, by law enforcement actually is just currently in the process of following up to ensure that that issue is complied with and uh, if that requires going to court we will be doing that in the uh, immediate, immediate future. My next question is for uh, Mr. Brown. I see, uh, you know, the construction projects, various construction projects around the town are ongoing and appear to be progressing uh, well. My, uh, the question that I have is with respect to the Isabella Street project, we're creating a, a funnel there for hopefully for children coming and going from the two schools in, in the vicinity. At the end of the William Street end of of Isabella, do we have a, an actual traffic control plan in place, Mr. Brown, that will be implemented hopefully before September? We're going to have a sidewalk on the east side of William Street, and, and is there to be a crosswalk? Will there be stop lights, stop signs, something to give those kids a chance to, you know, it's a hidden intersection. Is there some plan? Uh, available to uh, control traffic there so those people who are walking are risk is reduced at least through your worship there is no uh, set design uh, proposed for that particular location we wanted to get the work done and in the ground and completed before we um, continued down that path there are options that we can look at one is to uh, create a uh, a lit crossing, shall we say, similar to what we've just recently installed at the intersection of Todd Hope and Isabella Street, which has proven to be uh, quite successful uh, with a flashing light system and um, a road painting. Another option would be to create a three-way stop. Uh, and that's something that if council wishes me to, to, to look at further, we can do that. Uh, the Speed limit on William Street is 40 kilometers an hour. Sorry, it's set at 40 kilometers an hour. Whether people drive it is another story. Isabella Street is also set at a 40 kilometer an hour rating. When historically, when we build a new road in this town, they like to go faster than 40 kilometers an hour because they can. So I, th I think that it does deserve some consideration. Uh, it hasn't been built into the budget as far as the overall design but we could certainly look at doing something as soon as the uh, the rest of the work is done unless council requires uh, request me to do it beforehand so could I uh, move that we direct mr. Brown to bring back a recommendation at our next meeting so we can move you know whether it's going to be a light or personally I pr prefer I think it's quicker and easier that we just make it a three-way stop and be done with it uh, but uh, that he'd bring back a recommendation for one or the other at our next meeting. Yeah. Is there a second for that direction? Councillor Burden, um, all in <coughs> favor? That's carried. Um, while we're talking about stops, um, oh, sorry, Councillor Horneman, did you have any further questions? No. Um, any word on the four way stop at Gibson and Isabella? Through your worship, sorry, your worship, uh, we, um, we're waiting for the, the temperature to, to give us the opportunity to paint the lines. And we've just started doing that this week. Okay. So my, my plan is to wait for school to, to finish. Okay. And we'll paint all the lines. We'll get the signs up. We'll do plenty of advance warning on the internet and website. And I'm, I'm hopeful for sometime in early July to have that four-way stop up and running. All right, good. Because it 
reminded me the other morning when I was going to work when I had stopped and was making my turn and two kids just ran right across the road while I was making a left-hand turn, um, you know, from one side of Isabella Street to the other, and it was like, oh, please, you know. Uh, there was another, well, I guess that'll do, do for, oh, actually, I've been asked by a number of people, and, and uh, when are we painting the lines in town? I've been telling them when it quit raining, but, um, have you heard anything on when they could possibly do it? Yes. Yeah, we, Your Worship, we, uh, as I say, we just started painting the lines or the stop blocks this week Yeah. because of the weather, because of the temperature of the road. Yeah. <clears throat> we have to wait for the ambient temperature of the road to be up enough that the, the paint will stick. The line painting company is, is hovering around uh, this area as well as the, most of Ontario, uh, looking for areas that are, that are dry and warm. Yeah. Um, I suspect that you'll probably see them in this town in the next week or two. Okay, that sounds good. All right, thank you. Any further questions? Councillor Keith. Yes, thank you. I have a question. It has to do again with um, safety. When one is on Avenue Road and they're trying to make a left on a still a little bit of Wabig Street there, um, this is a real safety issue. I've had a number of people now explain to me, not only with in a vehicle or trying to cross that road and making a left, but even traffic that is coming into Avenue Road. Of course, there's no line painted, but that's a narrow road anyways. And it would seem that there's been a few near misses already. And I'm wondering what can be done in the meantime. I do realize eventually Wabick Street will be improved, but that's not still going to fix up the Avenue Road and making the left turns because there's a blind spot but is there any plans right now what can be done? Three worship, excuse me, three worship. Part of the design is for this, uh, for Wabeek Street is to realign that intersection a little bit to make it um, somewhat safer. Uh, there's no way that we're going to be able to make anything significantly different other than putting a four-way stop there, which would be virtually impossible when you're trying to get up Belvedere in the winter time or it won't work water <clears throat> people just have to learn to slow down and respect other people and that, that's part of the issue is that traffic people people just don't slow down i mean we as an example on wabi street we're still getting people trying to blow through that construction even though there's signs everywhere they think it says when they say close the local traffic only that means that they think that they're from perry sound so they're local so they can go through <laughs> We've actually had people stop and say that. So I don't, I'm not sure what else we can do. Um, but with regards to that intersection, we're trying to realign it to make it a little bit safer. I know in the past there's been a concave mirror up on a, on a pole, yeah. which is highly illegal uh, right now. Uh, there's, a, there's a yellow flashing light, which was supposed to slow people down. Still hasn't worked yet. So I'm not sure what else we can do. We've done pretty well everything we can. And the road was actually changed. At one time it came <clears> out <throat> closer to un underneath the bridge. And it was really dangerous because you had to stick your nose out because you couldn't see because of the abutment of, of the bridge. So it made it a real challenge getting out there. I, I'm, I'm, if I may, I, I'm hopeful that, that with this realignment and with the reconstruction that it will make it a little bit safer for that particular lane change okay. or that turn. Councillor Keith. I'm wondering if, when the painting of lines occur, is it possible even as a temporary till that road is fixed better, we could put a couple of extra white lines on so people are who are driving can see, hey, maybe people walking cross in that area. Because I think even though maybe they're not slowing down as much as they should, if you still had a couple of white lines with crosses all the way across, it tells somebody driving, hey, people who are walking cross. And I mean, I don't think that, uh, you know, a little bit of paint, what do we have to lose? I think it could be a simple safety thing in the meantime. Mr. Brown, do you worship? I'd be happy to install two lines that cross where the inner, where the pedestrians are crossing, but I can give you lots of examples where we've painted the living daylights out of these roads and people still aren't stopping. 
Well, what I'm just going to ask, when you put those two little lines that are crossing, which I'm very pleased to hear, maybe you could cut a couple of lines the opposite way in like a bright yellow or something, because it, it makes people see that walkway. Well, we have to paint a little bit. Mr. Brown. Your Worship, I, I, I agree, but we have to be cognizant of the fact that the rules state that if you start putting more of these lines down, then you're going to have to put an overhead sign, you're going to have to put flashing lights, because it's all part and parcel of the regulations that the MTO, uh, we have to adhere to. Uh, having said that, I will look into it, and I will see what we can do without overstepping the boundaries. Okay. All right. Councillor Backman. Um, during some of the conferences that I attended, a lot of communities are um, changing up the regular lines to creating illusions in the painting. Um, I presume you've seen that. I don't know if it falls within MTO, but it was pretty impressive to see that when you're driving around the corner and you think there's a big boulder in the middle of the road that you're going to slow down. Um, <laughs> I was just wondering, is there any opportunity to explore those new creativity? Um, Sir, Your Worship, I'd be happy to put an actual boulder in the middle of the road. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. We have, we have looked at, uh, we've, had, we've reviewed it initially. That we've seen some of the examples of the three-dimensional uh, crosswalks, which are very impressive. A little bit scary, but very impressive. So um, I could look into it further. I can check with the MTO. I don't think it's been done anywhere uh, in this area that I'm aware of, but I'll look into it. Thank you. Councilor McCann, then we're going to go to uh, the regular, get on with the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Brown. I was wondering, with all of the discussion, maybe it's overkill. I, I don't know. What if uh, we had put up a, uh, uh, a crosswalk that you, you pushed across, and then you've got the flashing lights uh, overhead, the drivers, so that they know that someone is crossing as they're approaching the, uh, the trestle there, just under before you go under the trestle and down Wabak Street. <clears throat> Three Worship, I think there's an issue with sight lines. When you're coming off of uh, Church Street and going up mm -hmm. and you're going underneath that bridge, you want to make sure that there's plenty of advanced time that you're seeing a light flashing. And that bridge may restrict the, the, the actual sight line of that. But again, I'll look into it uh, and I'll get report back to Council to see what our options are. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure if it would work in that location. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Uh, correspondence, Ms. Johnson. Your Worship, we have just one item of correspondence. It's from Jim and Marion Ferris, and it's regarding the um, Georgian Nordic Ski and Canoe Club location and programming at the William Street Park. And while generally supportive of that, they have some, some questions and concerns and, and suggestions on the location and programming. This item, has, this item of correspondence has been responded to by the manager of Parks and Recreation with a uh, copy of that to council members. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now we come to our deputations and presentations portion of tonight's council meeting. Deputations are held to a maximum of 10 minutes each, including questions of clarification from council. Deputations are also subject to the same rules of conduct as members of council and that no one shall speak disrespectfully or use offensive words or insulting expressions against any member of council staff or another member of the public. Please speak clearly and approximately one foot directly in front of the microphone so that everyone can hear what is being said. So our first deputation tonight is Ian Fleming, president of the Festival of the Sound Board, and Dan DiNicolo, member. Thank you. Good evening, and uh, thanks for having us tonight. My name is Dan DiNicolo, and I'm a board member with Festival of the Sound. And uh, we're here tonight to, uh, oh, I don't know this version of PowerPoint. I'm going to, give me one sec. Where's the view? There it is. Got it. Where is? Manifest. Oh, the one that's a slideshow. There we go. All right. Um, so, as you may or may not be aware, 
Uh, it is the 40th season for Festival of the Sound, and uh, we're going to walk you through a little bit about what's going on, a little bit of a history lesson, and uh, hopefully some uh, fun reminiscence along the way. Once upon a time, this was the Festival Hall, and that's actually the gymnasium at Perry Sound High School. Um, the outside was adorned with a sign as such, and that's what the tech room looked like. So you can imagine that things have certainly changed for uh, Thomas and company down at the, uh, the Stocky Center. Uh, a few highlights here for you. So 40 years in the community. Um, the first concert by festival was held on August 5th, 1979. Now 40, we are one of the oldest music festivals in Canada. Until 2002, concerts were held in the Festival Hall, also known as one of the gyms at Perry Sound High School. In 1985, James Campbell became the artistic director and continues in that role to the present day. And in 2003, the Festival of Sound moved from Perry Sound High School into the new Charles W. Stocky Center for the Performing Arts. If you take a close look at this picture, you may recognize a fellow in the upper right-hand corner it's just a slightly younger James Campbell. And so, there you go. I happened to be at a friend's place not long ago, and this friend has quite the collection of oddities and such. And one of the things that we found in his basement from August 2nd, 1985, was this copy of the Georgian Bay Beacon. And it's talking about Festival of the Sound. Great artists make 1985 Festival of the Sound a smash hit. Um, talks about some of the excitement around sold out cruises, needing to move from one gymnasium to another in the high school to be able to facilitate the extra people and bring in extra chairs. And then the, uh, I love this one, the Dixieland Jazz Cruise featuring Borgie's Banjo Reunion on July 27th have been sold out for almost three weeks. Now, here's an example of one of the advertisements that was also in that newspaper. And again, concerts take place at the Festival Hall, Perry Sound High School, 111 Isabella Street. Now, what I'm going to show you next is a little bit different. And this is another advertisement from the same <laughs> newspaper. <laughs> and it's the KIPP presents its 1985 and a half New Year's Eve party on Thursday, August 8th. Uh, doing it right on the other side of town. And so when I saw this, I thought, how awesome is it that Perry Sound has such a rich history of supporting different types of artistic endeavors, and the festival is pleased to be part of that. Some of the core goals of Festival of Sound, for those who may not know, um, to be a renowned, intimate celebration of chamber music is first and foremost. Uh, all performances to be exemplary and world-class. Provide innovative, creative, and thematic programming. Deepen the audience's experience, understanding, Appreciation and enjoyment of music provide emerging performers and composers with opportunities for exposure and recognition and fostering local interest in the arts. This is our current home, the CP Station Gallery, so the, the festival station office, we call it, uh, located at Perry Sound CP Station Building. This has been our home since 2013. Uh, this is our permanent box office, office space, and home to our very special Yamaha piano. It's also used for smaller festival concerts, talks, and events, including a new series of four intimate concerts known as the Connoisseur Club. During three weeks of the festival, the space plays a critical role as additional rehearsal space for visiting musicians. Often, people refer to festival as a single entity, and it is. But more importantly, it's a series of 60 different events. Um, and that's often not recognized. And each one of those events has their kind of own things going on. So this year, uh, five musical cruises aboard the Island Queen, everything from brass to jazz to Celtic. Uh, we've got a jazz-themed weekend, a folk-themed weekend, two gala events, films being shown, roundtable talks, celebration day that I'll get into shortly, and eight free events during the 2019 season for the public. So while you're at festival, or if you visit festival, you're going to see a little of this. You'll see a good deal of that. And you'll start to see some different things that maybe will help you to see festival in a slightly different light. Uh, the Toronto All-Star Big Band, Party Like It's 1940. This is a piece of programming happening on August 4th. 
that Latin flavor, uh, Guido Basso brings his Latin flavors to the 40th festival season. So Latin inspired music. And then the Joni book. This is actually really cool. Uh, a celebration of the legacy of Joni Mitchell. And that's on Friday, August 2nd. So some neat and different things that maybe you wouldn't normally consider to be part of what you consider festival to be. There's a lot of different things going on. Our current performance home is, of course, the Charles W. Stockey Center for the Performing Arts. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the festival's economic impact. So uh, the economic impact of Festival of Sound is significant. We are proud to be the second largest tourism economic generator in the area. A few interesting numbers for you to consider. 96,000 plus, that's the total number of Festival of Sound tickets sold since 2003. When we use 2003 as our baseline in this case because that's when our theater manager system kind of came into effect. So we can pull numbers from then. Five million plus, the total annual economic impact of Festival of Sound according to the Ontario Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport Trium model. 100, the total number of members of the National Youth Orchestra of Canada will be on the stage at the Stockey Centre simultaneously to perform Mallard's Masterpiece on Thursday, July 25th. It's going to be a little crowded. $549,849 total performance hall rental fees from Festival of the Sound to the town of Perry Sound for use of the Charles W. Stockey Center since 2003. $665,000 plus the total local accommodation expenses paid by Festival of the Sound for artists since 2003. So that's the artists that we bring to town, putting them into lodging. The next thing I'm going to talk to you briefly about are partnerships and community partnerships. So new for 2019, uh, partnering with the Stocky Center to present two free Bands on the Bay concerts during Festival of the Sound. So previously there was a block of time where Bands on the Bay stopped. Now Festival of the Sound is programming two of those weekends with complimentary type performances. Um, Long-standing music cruise partnerships with the Island Queen Cruise Line. Elegance at Seguin Valley Golf Club, a full course dinner with wine and concert. Uh, Georgian Bay Biosphere Reserve, we work with them on our plant sale. And then a concert this year at the Mary Street Center. This one is one that I think has a huge impact and not a lot of people know about it. And it's the Music Scores Program. And so what we have with Festival is twice a year, uh, in the spring and in the fall, a uh, group of artists will visit all local high schools and spend uh, a week in the area visiting all grade four to six in all area schools, students. At the end of that week, students are bused or walked to the Stocky Center to experience a formal concert. For many, this is their first visit to the Stocky Center and an impactful experience already having met the performers during school visits. Music scores is our investment in the future of music and arts in the Perry Sound area. <coughs> So, uh, there's Guy Few playing the trumpet. Our 40th anniversary celebration. So some of the highlights, we've got a, a, a full slate of, uh, of events, over 60 as I mentioned. Um, the opening gala concert is a program featuring musical highlights from past seasons. Come to the party, which is kind of the tagline that we're using throughout the season, uh, is our anniversary dinner, gala and concert. And then 40 for 40 is a special event on August 9th. That's our celebration day and features 40 musical works performances representing all 40 years of Festival of Sound with performances held at a variety of locations around Perry Sound. Uh, basically starts on the Island Queen in the morning and moves through different locations in town. There's a barbecue, there's a tea, and then back to the Stocky Center. So with that, I'm gonna ask you to uh, consider coming to the party. We're excited for the start of the 40th season. We hope that you'll join us for a performance this summer. If you're not sure where to start, I'm going to ask you to please call or stop by the festival office, and somebody there will be happy to help you uh, find what you're looking for or what you don't know what you're looking for and you might like. I um, want to say thank you again to our artists, patrons, volunteers, and the Perry Sound Area community for your continued support. We look forward to the adventures that the next 40 years will bring. That's all I have for you tonight. Okay. Do you have any questions? All right. Any questions from council? No? Okay. Oh. Councillor Bachman? Just to clarify, 
Um, you, did you state that there were eight free events held outside of the three weeks of the um, festival in the facility that you were in? Um, so there's there's eight free events total through festival, like throughout the actual 23 days of festival. Oh, I see. Um, and they're all actually marked in our brochure. They're marked as free events. So that includes the two bands on the bay. Then there's a talk. There's different things like that going on that are open to the public. And then I guess the follow-up, do you have any events that happen outside of the three weeks throughout the year at um, your location? We do. Uh, so the one of the, the key ones new this year is this connoisseur club idea. So inside the uh, inside the station, we have seating for 40 to 50 people, and we're doing a series of intimate concerts there. So that would be an example. Um, last question. If you had um, more seating, do you think you would fill the seats uh, for those uh, uh, that uh, venues, those venues? I don't, I don't know whether I can answer that question, okay. but anybody? No. That's okay. If you follow up, that's fine. All right. Just curious. Appreciate sure. it. Thanks. Thank you. Councilor Horn. Um, thank you for your presentation, Dan. I just think if, if I could just say on, on behalf of Council, thank the festival for 40 years of tremendous um, value to this community and um, entertainment, which has been just tremendous. And again, 40 more years would be fantastic. So I just want to say thank you for all the work that you guys do. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I had the hardest part of the whole show. I've got to, some brochures for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's okay, you know, I got one. Oh, you got one? Yeah. <laughs> I'll be more back. You've got one? Okay. Our uh, next deputation is Russell Becker. Community Relations Director of the Gardens of Perry Sound with regard to the gardens expansion. Welcome. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Russell Becker. I'm from the Gardens of Perry Sound. Uh, the reason why I'm here, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh, to sort of close a bit of a loop. So um, the reason why the Gardens of Perry Sound is in Perry Sound right now is because of the township of Perry Sound and because of council. Um, so back, not exactly sure when, uh, an RFP was submitted by the township of Perry Sound. Um, it was supported by council to have a retirement home built. So the reason why I'm here today is because of that RFP. So our owners found that RFP, found that RFP and basically created the gardens of what it is now. So about four years ago, we created a 70-suite retirement home in Perry Sound. Um, we're the only licensed retirement home in Perry Sound. Um, and we've actually been pretty successful. So I was saying that we're actually expanding that by another 37 more suites, um, thanks to the town of Perry Sound, which is great. Um, with saying that, um, our new expansion is going to include uh, several new one bedrooms. Uh, we're also including a one bedroom with a balcony. We're including a two bedroom, um, which is a little over 1,000 square feet, which is pretty large for a retirement home uh, suite. Um, also with saying that, uh, we have about maybe 35 or 40 employees currently, um, potentially getting higher with our expansion. Um, with saying that as well, we also have a pretty big community space. So we try to be involved in the community as much as possible. Um, I know many of you have been there for different events. Uh, we're actually part of the Festival of Sound as well. Um, with our construction, it kind of stopped it from this year, but we're hopefully <laughs> we'll come back for next year. Um, also saying that we've uh, made several donations to the community. We're part of, uh, try to be part of every kind of hospice-like event, um, and we try to make a big deal of it. So uh, I'm not really here to, to ask for money or for anything like that, which I'm sure is unusual. Um, but with saying that, I just basically just want to say thank you for the town for their support through this whole process. I know through the, uh, the, the building of this as well, a lot of uh, permissions and grants and pieces of paperwork needs to be completed to make this happen. So thank you very much for that. And uh, so yeah, so our expansion is set to open on July 1st. 
We are having an information session set up for Monday, June 24th at 6.30. If anyone wants to come to that, they're more than willing, they're more than welcome to. Um, that's an opportunity to get any questions asked about what is a retirement home and get a chance to sort of see our suites, even though they're not totally complete yet. Um, by July 1st, they should be. We have people that are set to move in on July 2nd, so um, <laughs> at least it should be done by then, I hope. Um, also with saying that, we are also having a big open house um, that everyone's invited to. Um, I'll send some more formal invitations at this point on, I think it's set for um, August 4th currently. Uh, time to be determined, but it's going to be a barbecue. We're going to have live music for that. Uh, it's going to be a good opportunity to see our suites completed and staged and all ready to go from there. Okay. That's about it. Thank you. That's very good, and and you know we're very pleased to have you in the community. I mean, if anyone ever, and you hear a lot of things, I've never heard anyone say anything negative about the facility, uh, the staff, or the food. I mean, it, it has always been very positive, and you know, as a little bit of history with that, um, when the proposal was first, like the RFP was put out, the the um, Proposal for the Gardens of Perry Sound or from the company, your, your main company, yep. was not the highest bid or the highest offer. But what you had was, is you had a time frame that it was going to be done on. And that, that's what council looked at at the time. There was a company here that wanted to do something in a reasonable amount of time. And that's what council looked at because we wanted, we knew we needed that type of facility in the community and it, it was a demand. So it was certainly a partnership in a way that, that has worked out really, really well for the community. Uh, I would be curious to know how many of the new suites are actually taken up, yep. um, which you may know right offhand. Yeah, so we're, about, we're a little over 50% currently. Of, of the new ones. Of, our, of the new expansion, yeah. yeah. We're saying that some suites are more readily available than others. Sure. Um, our two bedroom, we only have two, uh, three of them available in total. Yeah. Um, and they're all spoken for. Wow. Um, when you see them, they're like little condos. Yeah. They're pretty fancy. Um, <laughs> and uh, hopefully you guys will get a chance to see them firsthand. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Anyway, we appreciate what you're doing in the community. And you're a major employer now as well, yep. so, which is good. Any further questions, comments from Council? Council Keith. I'm just going to say very quickly, I think not only are you an asset to our community, but I know I appreciate when you come to the, ta to the table tonight, to the council table, and you say thank you to the town of Perry Sound for support, because it seems to me as a councillor, we often hear complaints, but it's always nice to hear a thank you once in a while, so I appreciate that, and I think the rest of us do too. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I do have a mild complaint. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so just remember, you were at a council table at one time in your life. Yeah, too. I've been that's here right, as well. So. so that's why I said I'm not asking for any money. I know what it's like. All right. Thanks, everybody. We're good. Thank you. We have about five minutes left on the agenda. If there's anyone that wants to make a further deputation, I only have the two on here, and that, that was all. And if so, you'd come forward and state your name and seeing none? Okay, on with the rest of the agenda. Oh, no, Mayor and Councillor's reports. We'll start with Councillor McCann tonight. Thank you. I'll just wait a moment. Sure. Thanks, John. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, I think you're good to go. Okay, great. Uh, thank you and good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council and staff and uh, those who are watching. Um, the 295, or rather, let me say, on Sunday, June the 9th, at uh, 2 in the afternoon, I attended the 75th Annual Ceremonial Review and Inspection. The uh, 
commanding officer, staff, and cadets in combination with the squadron sponsor and squadron sponsoring committee were all on hand. This, of course, is in line with the 75th anniversary of the uh, 295 McPherson Royal Canadian Air Cadet Squadron. So they've been around for 75 years and uh, have quite an impressive uh, record of uh, activity and, and uh, involvement in the community and the number of boys and girls that, uh, that have uh, come through the ranks over the years. Uh, the review and the inspection, like all others, provides an opportunity to show the parents, friends, the Air Cadet League of Canada, as well as the military military and the public how well the cadets have learned and uh, taken to heart the lessons and training over the uh, the last year. Congratulations to everyone involved. Uh, they demonstrated survival and first aid uh, skills, uh, drills, athletics and a variety of other activities. The event uh, was held at the uh, Kinsman Park and it was an absolutely wonderful day and they did send back uh, uh, appreciation to uh, the town of Perry Sound uh, with this uh, certificate uh, dated uh, 2019. And this of course was uh, for being there every year for the inspection and I, I believe uh, Mr. Mayor, you were with the, at the banquet uh, which was held a few days prior to that. Yes. So that's uh, that. So congratulations to everyone involved there and again on their 75th anniversary. Uh, this morning, um, I, along with Councillor Backman, was uh, at the Perry Sound Public Library for its monthly board meeting. Financial statements were discussed and accepted. Uh, the uh, building maintenance was on the agenda, new business, including a decision to move forward with payroll direct deposit and a uh, yard sale, which is coming up on Saturday, July the 6th uh, at the... Uh, at the library, if you'd like to donate some items or help out, please get in touch with Rita at uh, the uh, the library. Uh, my wife and I had an opportunity to attend Men of the D, uh, Men of the Sound, uh, which was at the Mary Street Center a couple of weeks ago. Very very well attended. I understand they're looking for uh, a larger venue next year to accommodate those who uh, who came out. So congratulations uh, to all who involved who were involved there. And finally, I'd like to offer my condolences to Dr. David Wright and his family on the passing of uh, Jill Wright. Uh, they're very well known in the community. Dr. David Wright is a retired dentist. He was also heavily involved with uh, diabetes education in the area over the years and uh, I know it's been a tough time for them and so uh, they're in our thoughts. So to uh, the Wright family, uh, our deepest in, uh, sympathies. And that is my report. Okay, thank you. Councillor Backman. On June 15th, uh, Saturday, I attended the Bobby Orr Hall of Fame Youth Awards. Um, it was quite an event, and I am proud after a few tries, um, my son was awarded with a Youth Award. Oh, I say three times a charm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I'd just like to say congratulations to all the award recipients. Um, there was a wide variety, and... Um, it was in a great event, and uh, it was really interesting to see this year um, and, and very exciting that uh, the um, scholarship awards to the grade 12 students, they had an anonymous um, donor that increased the scholarship up to $5,000 each. So that was uh, quite amazing for those students going on to university. Um, as Councillor McCann um, stated, um, I attended the library, library board meeting this morning at 9 a.m. Um, from there, I attended the RTO um, Regional Tourism Summit at the Stocky Centre. And uh, just going back the following Friday, um, on the 14th, uh, I attended the uh, Three Strikes Against Cancer um, opening ceremonies where I gave greetings from the town of Perry Sound. It was very well received. Um, it was uh, amazing to see the community come out and it just showed the will and the spirit uh, that we have in the people of our community and uh, especially to those who are traveling outside of the community that uh, traveled uh, to participate in the event. Um, sadly the weather did not um, cooperate but uh, again going back to the will and the spirit of the people that did not uh, deter them from participating and uh, I'm sure we will hear that uh, there will be lots of success in that fundraiser and um, that is my 
speech um, report for this evening. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you. Councillor Horn. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. On June 10th, I attended the Chamber of Commerce meeting and just like to announce that on Friday, September 20th will be the awards uh, for businesses of uh, the Chamber and also other businesses in the Perry Sound and area. So that will be a cruise on the Island Queen. So again, that's Friday, September 20th. Uh, 5.30 is boarding. 6 to 8 will be the cruise. The open nominations close July 1st. It's on the Chamber website right now. So there are five categories. Three will be for Chamber members and then two for um, open non-members of the Chamber. And just a quick update, uh, presently there is 280 uh, Chamber members. So it continues to climb uh, with the uh, hard work of the uh, Chamber board and staff. As Councillor Bachman mentioned, the Bobby Orr Hall of Fame uh, weekend, June 14th and 15th. Um, I had the uh, privilege on Friday night of attending the book signing with Mr. Orr, and over 400 books were signed by Mr. Orr that evening. So I'd like to uh, thank Mr. Orr for his attendance for that event, still seen as an icon of sports, hockey, and ambassador for the town of Perry Sound. And again, uh, as Can Councillor Bachman mentioned, uh, Saturday, June 15th was the awards ceremony, and there was 12 awards given out to the youth of our community, and all of them are well-deserved. And once again, we have fantastic youth in our community that are doing tremendous things. I'd like to thank Caitlin Dyer for her work as curator of the Bobby Orr Hall of Fame for a wonderful event that was organized Friday and Saturday. And I also would like to thank uh, Dave Garrigan, chair of the uh, Bobby Orr Hall of Fame Youth Award and his committee, which did a uh, tremendous amount of work. Fa fabulous sponsorship from MasterCard, m and Meats, and again, I'd like to thank Doug Gilmore and Mr. Ken Hall. Um, Heidel for their donation for the grade 12 um, winners. Also this year we had another uh, donation from uh, the local Tim Horton uh, franchise owners that donated money for the, uh, the graduates of the grade 12 award. So thank you very much to them. And that's my report. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Councillor Keith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, fellow councillors, staff, and the public. Just a couple of things. One, I had a very light couple of weeks, and that would be that I was uh, down to greet people for some time at uh, the when the Pearl Mist came in uh, twice in the last couple of weeks. So there was 153, I believe, passengers on the one ship and 171 on the second. It was nice to see that they were partaking of um, sites in Perry Sound as well as going out to Kilbear. Uh, the second uh, time they were in uh, yesterday it was really nice they were able to walk on the fitness trail because it wasn't raining and the bottom line is that i was very pleased to hear is people were making very favorable comments about perry sound and uh, and in addition to that saying how friendly people are in perry sound and we all know that those kind of favorable comments do a lot of good for our community so i was very pleased to uh, hear that and see the the friendliness uh, of uh, the people that were there second of all i just wanted to mention if you notice the flags are at half mask on uh, june 23rd that's in recognition of the national day of uh, victims of terrorism so in all ontario government buildings uh, that's the flags will be half mass so that we remember that between sunrise and sunset thank you okay thank you councillor bird <clears throat> thank you mr mayor um okay on wednesday june the 12th i attended the regular meeting of the downtown business association um they're working hard to make things happen down there the hanging flower baskets are in place uh, the uh, new parkettes at the uh, James Street parking lot are, are being assembled uh, now. Um, events are being planned, the next event being the Georgian Bay Craft Fair on Saturday, July 27th. 
Uh, during the craft fair, a silent auction will be held for the live edge wooden plaques, which have been uh, painted by local artists. Uh, the annual car show will be on uh, Saturday, August the 17th in the downtown. Uh, there was some uh, concern mentioned by some of the merchants that uh, they have a, an issue with uh, young people hanging around downtown all hours of the day and night and, and, uh, and around the Market Square Park. Uh, they feel they're causing potential shoppers to feel intimidated and maybe uh, causing them to avoid the downtown. Uh, the DBA will be uh, contacting council by letter to voice their concerns about this issue. Uh, on Thursday, June 13th, I attended the regular meeting of the District Social Services Board at Sundridge. Uh, our new CAO, Joe Bradbury, has taken over the reins and is still familiarizing himself with things, but uh, will be up to full speed in a hurry, I'm pretty sure. Uh, just one other thing I just thought I'd mention was the uh, on August or no July the 13th the Perry Sound Golf and Country Club will be celebrating their 90th anniversary and they're having a gala dinner at the golf club and I think there are still some tickets available if anybody's interested and that's my report great thank you Councilor Bornman thank you your worship good evening everyone on June 7th I attended the, the Lakeland uh, uh, Holdings annual general meeting along with Mr. Harris. We heard of uh, several exciting initiatives that at Lakeland are investigating with specifically with re respect to uh, Perry Sound. And I expect that we'll be receiving a visit as early as next month to confirm some of these activities. Uh, this brings flooding aid up considerable time and, and resources for the company, pushing back the, the landscaping at the Cascade Generation Station into 2020. Uh, because Lakeland continues to grow, uh, the shareholder agreement has been reviewed by the board, and at this meeting, the owners determined that it, in fairness to everyone that we would have it reviewed by uh, an independent third party uh, council uh, to make comment as required. Uh, I expect Mr. Mary that you'll be hearing back from that quite shortly. <coughs> um, in 2018 the town of Perry Sound's dividend from Lakeland is 295,000 up approximately 60,000 from the year before. Uh, so this continues to be a win-win situation in my mind uh, with respect to our relationship with them. On June 11th, I attended a Board of Governance training session offered uh, through Belvedere Heights. On June 14th and 15th, has been mentioned, uh, along with Councillor Horn, I was engaged at the Bobby Orr uh, Book Signing and Youth Awards uh, uh, event. I'm going to come right out and say it. congratulations to Emma Sapolsky and Adam Quinn. These were the two grade 12 students who won the, uh, the $5,000 uh, cash scholarship on Saturday. Well deserved by both. I wish you uh, the best of luck in your future endeavors. Uh, they both wear great events. And our staff, Mr. Garrigan and his group, and especially Mr. Orr, deserve a lot of credit for uh, the work they're doing in these uh, avenues. Today, I too attended the Explorer's Edge uh, Tourism Summit. Mr. Harris, I've left you a copy of their annual uh, operation and business uh, plan, along with a number of invitations for the first scheduled flight by Porter Air uh, next Thursday, June 27th at uh, Muskoka Airport. Anybody who's wanting to attend uh, should be able to. On the negative side, I was again struck by the abysmal attendance by local operators and quite frankly, municipal staff and, and councillors. Uh, I know it's not uh, necessarily within our wheelhouse directly, but it is the largest single employer business in the area. And I think it's something that we collectively need to get our heads around and pay closer attention to than what we're doing now. That's a conversation for another day. I've been in and out of the arena, the Bobby Orr Center, the past uh, couple of weeks, pestering the staff. Uh, work is continuing down there on the, the flooring. To, they're uh, close to having uh, 
piping installed and I expect that concrete will be poured within the next uh, week to 10 days with any luck. And I'll close by saying happy birthday to our youngest daughter, Allie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, council staff and public, uh, June 7th, I was in Brampton for a Markle meeting in Peel Region office. Uh, June 11th, uh, the mayors got together uh, to have a conversation uh, in Seguin Township. June 13th was the DSAB meeting that uh, Councillor Burden mentioned. It was in Sundridge. And then again, welcome to the new CAO, uh, Joe Bradbury, and certainly all our best to Janet Patterson, the former CAO, on her retirement, and wish her all the best in the, in the future. June 14th, uh, I was in Toronto for the AMO, uh, MOU meeting at uh, Queen's Park. And then June 15th, after work, I attended the 150th celebration anniversary at Trinity Anglican Church. Um, I had promised them months ago that, that I would be at this before we knew when the actual date was for the, the Youth Awards. So. Um, I had to live up to my promise that I would be at that at that meeting, and, which I did. And Archbishop uh, Anne was in attendance as well, and she led the service on on uh, Sunday uh, for for the congregation. Um, June sixteenth uh, was the commemoration of the Salvation Army disaster relief uh, vehicle. And I certainly have to thank the Salvation Army for all their efforts in the community, whether it's the food bank, um, the social service aspect that they, they give, or the uh, you know, Christmas time for uh, collecting gifts for the children. Um, and, and going out when there are issues. Uh, for example, they were up Perry Sound. 33 that fire that last year or other fire situations where they can provide some uh, coffee food whatever to those that are working the the situation at the time so uh, they certainly do give uh, a lot of volunteer effort to the community and um, you know I, I'm pleased that council came up with a donation along with others in the community as well so that that vehicle, which is a very expensive vehicle, uh, can be part of this community and this area to support um, whatever may arise that the, the vehicles actually needed. So uh, thank you to them. And, you know, I will say thank you to Mr. Orr, uh, Stocky Center staff, volunteers, uh, Dave Garrigan and his team, um, all of those that put the Youth Achievement Awards together. Um, a great thing for, for our community, and I really have to commend Mr. Orr for his outreach and everything that, that he does do. Um, it is very much appreciated. So, Councillor Horn. Uh, thank you. Um, I did uh, forget to uh, mention a uh, major sponsor for the Bobby Orr Hall of Fame Youth Awards, and that's Novus Apparel. And they provided a toque and scarf to every nominee. Plus, they provided a jacket to all the winter, all the winners of the 12 um, categories. So I just like to uh, thank uh, um, and no Novus Apparel for their generosity for the event. So Excellent. thank you. That's good. Thank you. So that was my report, and we're on with the agenda. Yes, we have the addition to the agenda, which was 7.1, and it's moved by Councillor Borneman and second by Councillor McCann. Be resolved that the Town of Perry Sound supports the national recognition of Indigenous Peoples Day by declaring June 21st, 2019 as Indigenous Peoples Day in the Town of Perry Sound. Any discussion? Uh, seeing none, I will say that, uh, what was it, 2016, when we had one of the largest Indigenous celebrations in the country here with the commemoration of the Francis Pegamagalo um, statue, which is down at the Stocky Centre, um, 
by Georgian Bay, and uh, uh, it was certainly a moment in time to be proud of, and, and we should continue our uh, recognition and, and celebration. So, uh, all in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. <clears throat> Item 911, moved by Councillor Burden, second by Councillor Barnum, and the Council accepts the 2018 Annual Investment Report in accordance with the Town's Investment Policy. Discussion. Councillor McCann. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I like to be the one to give uh, Stephanie, I think this must be her first opportunity to speak, so maybe you could tell the public <laughs> what this is all about. <laughs> okay, thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, uh, so overall the investment report is positive with investment income increasing uh, by approximately $98,000 or 18.7% from 2017 to 2018. Um, so, and all in investments adhere to the approved investment policy and meet the eligibility requirements set out by the Municipal Act, which uh, specifies limits for each type of investment that can be held. Uh, the town's investment policy um, includes guidelines uh, for the portfolio mix of the town's investments, and currently the investments meet those, those guidelines. And I think for the public's interest to know that our total cash and investments for the portfolio are? Uh, so uh, at year end 2018, the total investments are 20 million uh, 836,000 approximately. Um, and that's, yeah, which includes the increase of uh, 98,000 approximately from 2017 to 2018. Very good, thank you. Anything further from Council? All in favor? And that's carried, thank you. And we have direction. Uh, mover and seconder, please. Councilor Borneman, Council McCann. The direction is that Council directs staff to not proceed any further with train whistle cessation in Perry Sound due to the risk to public safety and potential town liability, as well as overburden co overburdening costs of implementing train whistle cessation. Discussion. Councilor McCann. Thank you. I think, and, and thank you for the report. It, there's an awful lot of work went into it, a lot of reading. Um, and uh, I, I, I think deep down inside, we all would have liked to have uh, seen the end of the whistles. Uh, for those of us who live there, some, some people become immune to it and don't hear the whistles anymore. Uh, I can't seem to block that out of my mind. Maybe that's my attention deficits coming up again. But anyhow, um, I think that it's it's wise and prudent of us to to uh, to drop this idea for a number of obvious reasons. So uh, I'm, I'm disappointed, but uh, I think if we're playing it safe, that this is what we need to do. Yeah, I think there's a number of people that are disappointed, and and but I I think you know having to do the work that we would end up being responsible for and spending over half a million dollars just to try and make that happen, and then really no guarantee afterwards is, um, you know, kind of a bit of a shock to the system. Councillor Borneman. Well, as is pointed out in the report, and I think everyone is aware, you know, the train whistles is only part of the issue with respect to uh, noise created by the railway. So, you know, I, I do support this action that we not pursue this direction, but I, I think that we need to direct staff to continue in their efforts to have the railway take yeah. the steps that they need to take to minimize the screeching of the rails and so on and so forth, which in my mind is the 
longer, more piercing noise anyway. So I'm, I'm hopeful we can add that to tonight's agenda so this conversation just doesn't go into the waste paper basket and die. Maybe we can, maybe we can have another direction right afterwards <coughs> because there's also that person that comes through at 2 o'clock in the morning every other day or whatever that loves to just blow that whistle at 2 o'clock in the morning and when the rest of them can do their toot toots or whatever and work their way through quietly this I don't know who that is but they need to be told. Uh, Councillor McCann and then Councillor Keith. Just to follow up uh, and, and it just occurred to me as well I, I'm wondering for uh, uh, with the with the one crossing just behind the hospital, which is in Seguin Township, I, I gather that that crossing wouldn't have been included in in this equation, which means we would still hear uh, hear the, uh, uh, the the train whistles uh, uh, fairly well at uh, this at that end of town. I, I don't know if that's true or not. Would that uh, crossing have been included in in this overall equation? Through your worship, uh, no, that, that, that's in Sequin Township, so that's not under our jurisdiction. Thanks. Councillor Keith. Yes, I had three comments in addition to what has already been mentioned. I, I know that at previous meetings I had asked when we were talking about the train whistle if that included the screeching, which is what I was very concerned about, and the answer was no. Uh, the second one is, I think we do have to remember, even if one doesn't like the whistle, it is there for a reason, safety. And I think that we, we also have to keep that in mind, safety. The other thing is that it has been mentioned, but I think that one should just look at the financial impact here was looked at, was uh, suggested to be a roughly 617,200. But I think we look at not only that financial impact, if we were going to even consider spending money, is that the best bang we could get for 670, 17,000? I don't think that would be a good bang for the buck. And we have a lot of taxpayers here who have tight incomes already, and I think that they want to see something being spent <coughs> for their money. So I think that, as mentioned, there's a few good reasons here why this is not appropriate, and I do support the next direction. Thank you. We do have Mr. Pengra here who has been dealing with this. Uh, Forrest, did you want to give a very high level overview of it? Maybe 120 words or less. Um, Through you, Mr. Mayor, yeah. absolutely. Uh, I actually put together a very, very brief okay. presentation. Um, I can probably skip the majority of the slides because. There's a lot there. Those, yeah, those who have read the, the <laughs> report will certainly be able to, uh, to understand what I'm getting at. Um, I think first and foremost, when we were looking at this, uh, uh, this study in general, was public safety. Um, anytime you talk to anyone, be it Transport Canada, uh, CN, CP, their first priority with any of this is rail safety. Uh, they firmly, firmly believe that the whistles are there for a reason. That being said, Transport Canada has authored an eight-step eight uh, uh, process for municipalities wishing, wishing to stop the whistles. Um, as per Council's direction, we secured the services of a firm called SEMA Plus. Uh, they were fantastic to deal with and they really handled the entire study from cradle to grave. We provided, you know, input and, and data and uh, uh, they really ran with it and liaised with both CN and CP. Um, the, the whistles, I mean, the, it's very um, prescriptive and how they are blown. It's a quarter mile or 400 meters from the intersection and they are to carry their long, long, short, long tone uh, from that distance all the way through until the uh, locomotive has fully occupied the crossing. Um, and it's the same pattern every time. There are other patterns that they follow for other forms of communication but for as the train is approaching the crossing they do follow that. Um, I won't bother you with the eight steps, um, except for I would recommend you take note of step 5A, which, uh, in which case if a municipality requests to move forward with train whistle cessation and the railroads do not want to grant that, the municipality does have a path to uh, uh, go through Transport Canada. But again, as you said, Mr. Mayor, uh, there, there's no guarantee with any of this. 
uh, any of these. It can be uh, caught up in discussion for many, many years. Uh, to date, we've completed steps one, two, and four. Uh, step three is public consultation. Uh, it really didn't make sense for us to undertake step three prior to step four because, to be quite honest, we really didn't know a whole lot about uh, our crossings, you know, whether they were safe or not, um, you know, from truly from an engineering standpoint. Uh, the assessment uh, covered both crossings on Isabella Street, Church Street, Cascade Street, and Forest Street, uh, and as Peter said, not the one in Seguin Township. Uh, they, the assessment included field inspections and safety assessments, and with those ins uh, inspections, they put together a countermeasures matrix, which essentially outlines every single issue, um, what it would take to resolve the issue, the cost of doing so, and who's, who's the, uh, who the cost would be associated with. Uh, and finally, the noise modeling, which I, I found quite, uh, quite telling. Uh, as you probably could read from the report, they studied just about anything you could possibly study when it comes to train. Uh, they went so far as to trying to get information from the railroads about the actual throttle settings that they're using coming through the, the town because that plays greatly into noise in general. Uh, it affects how the, the even though the whistles or um, air horns, of, as some have called them, uh, carry down the corridor through the Doppler effect. Uh, there's uh, the actual countermeasure matrix. I would recommend anyone who wants more detailed uh, view of the uh, the recommendations uh, to, to download the council, council agenda. It is in there. As we were discussing, the total cost is 617000 or thereabout. Now that's with a bit of an asterisk. So that doesn't include things like Anytime you're within the railway corridor, you have to hire the railroad to provide flaggers. To provide flaggers, you're spending at minimum $1,000 per day. So let's say you're putting up fencing. Uh, you know, I think it comes to about five miles worth of fencing. You're probably going to need flaggers for every single day. And I can imagine that would probably take well over 100 days to do the construction uh, in entirety. So, I mean, that, that number, I mean, it's it's truly a ballpark, it, I would suspect it would be considerably higher than that. Um, some of the costs are shared with the railway, the majority are not. Um, SEMA did give a uh, note and referencing the noise levels and specifically referring to noise pollution. Uh, I, I think everyone can recognize that it is not a pleasant sound. Um, but again, it's, it's for a purpose. Uh, it's kind of hard to describe the, the mapping, but you can certainly see the difference in colors uh, or shading between uh, the mapping uh, at nighttime with whistles or without. The intensity certainly decreases. Uh, and as per my report, I believe the average um, noise level would reduce uh, I think it was five to eight percent in decibels um, with ceasing the, the whistles uh, on an average throughout the entire day, but the instantaneous reduction would be approximately 20 decibels. And the final graphic in the presentation basically just outlines, you know, what it would look like uh, as a total noise reduction throughout the town um, from a, a, a noise level standpoint, and that's where the five to eight percent came from. And so I was curious when we started getting into this when... Uh, um, when Stephanie first released the, the story uh, to the paper. And so I, I read it, and then down towards the bottom, I noticed there was, uh, there was a bit of a, a survey. And it, it seems the, the public also have an opinion on it. Uh, certainly, um, you know, there was a lot referencing it being a safety device. I had numerous letters from the public, uh, and, you know, I presumably... If that were this were to move forward, you would engage the public more, and you would get more public consultation. Um, went over that. Uh, there was one thing I did want to mention, and again on the safety. So I pulled all the statistics from the Transportation Safety uh, Board, 
And in the last 10 years in Ontario, there have been 219 trespass-related deaths and 73 serious injuries. I think safety is, uh, I mean, safety is clearly everyone's priority with this, um, but I think it's very important to keep that in the back of our minds. Okay. Thank you. Councilor McCann. Thank you. It sounds like it would be easier to just move the track. <laughs> uh, you know, it, and I think we've all thought of this in the past, it would be something if, uh, and I'm just putting it out there, wouldn't it be something if, if CN were able to relocate their track outside the town and that whole corridor was opened up for a trail or, or would open up more property for development in town? That's, I guess that's the pie in the sky wish. The decibels, it just seems like it's overkill. You know, and especially in this town where the, all of the crossings are so close together, um, it I, you know, on a on a national basis, is, is there any anybody complaining about any? Uh, I mean, when you talk about noise pollution and such, uh, it just seems like overkill with the with the with the uh, uh, when you look at how or hear how loud it is. And... Through you, Mr. Mayor. I I mean, I would say certainly there's complaints. Um, you know, I, the noise level is a standard. I believe the minimum standard is 100 decibel, um, but some trains do use slightly different whistles that can be up to 110 decibels. Um, again, it's a safety device to get your attention. Thanks. Thank you for the, your work. Councilor Horn. Thank you for the report, and uh, certainly uh, the information in there is really valuable in terms of safety for our community. My question is, is this report shared with CN and CP, and can we? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, absolutely. Uh, it's possible that they already have it. I, I, I don't know. Um, but certainly, if whistle cessation is to proceed, the report, as produced by SEMA, would absolutely go to them uh, for their review. And again, we would be paying for their review of this. Um, and yeah, it, it, it most definitely would be, can be, and probably should be. Uh, certainly in regard to the, uh, the items in the countermeasure matrix where the, uh, the railway has some improvements that they should be making. Okay, very good. Councilor Keith. Well, two things is uh, seeing as this is on a public agenda, it seems it would be very simple to put that also on the website for anybody else who is interested in, in looking at that just to start with. And the second question I have is uh, when you uh, quoted a moment ago the deaths, uh, trust by passed by death and uh, also the injuries. I wasn't clear, is that for the whole of Canada or the province of Ontario, please? Through you, Mr. Mayor, that is just for Ontario. Uh, if you want Canada-wide, I can certainly provide that. In fact, the, uh, all of that data is publicly available uh, in, the, uh, in the presentation. I don't know if they had that as part of their, their package, but uh, I'll give you the, uh, the URL. Okay, thank you. Anything further? All in favor of the direction? That's carried. Councilor Barnuman, do you have? Yes, Your Worship. I'd move that staff be directed to. Uh... I have. Uh, Ms. Johnson has here that staff be directed to continue in efforts to have railway take steps needed to minimize screeching of rails, which is longer. More piercing noise. Is that what you want? We'll start with that. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, just, just further to that, yeah. uh, we've heard from Mr. Bossart before who's done those noise studies yeah. independently. Uh, I suspect that at some point in time, Mr. Brown will be back here saying in order to have ammunition enough to, you know, the, the rules are there. Uh, you know what what the noise levels are allowed to be but I suspect mr. Brown will be back here saying that we need to budget some money for somebody who's certified or qualified or whatever to undertake those noise studies in order to get them to move on this uh, so maybe uh, 
we should be thinking about next year's budget already. Very good. Um, so a seconder for that direction. Councilor McCann, any further discussion on that? All in favor? That's carried then. Good. I need a mover and seconder for 941, the next direction. Councilor Borneman, Councilor Keith. You get it all set to go here. Efficiency. Right on the back. So this one I need right now. Okay. Yep. This is the next one. Oh, is it? Yes. Oh. Okay, I'll move that one forward because okay. Mr. Penger is already lined up or whatever here. So I'm moving forward 941. So it was moved by Councillor Bornem and seconded by Councillor Keith that the report and presentation be received for information pur purposes. And uh, Mr. Harris is going to uh, begin the presentation. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just while uh, Forrest is getting set up, uh, I guess it's, it's my pleasure to, to announce that uh, uh, the West Prairie Sound Geographic Network System uh, won a top award at the MISA conference recently. Uh, MISA is the Municipal Information Systems Association. Uh, and the actual award is the uh, 2019 Excellence in Municip Municipal Systems. So it's quite an accomplishment. A lot of the uh, municipalities that are members in MISA are the larger municipalities in Ontario. We're the only member in this area. Um, the uh, MISA is advised that they received a number of submissions, more than, than they've had in the last number of years, and that uh, the West Perry Sound Geographic Network System was unanimously the top uh, uh, system of the five that received an award. So uh, a lot of accomplishment here that goes to the staff in the seven area municipalities, <laughs> a lot of recognition. Uh, the two things that stand out for me in this, uh, in receiving this award is what collaboration can, can result in. I mean, this started a number of years ago and it's been building uh, every year, but it, the seven municipalities are participating. Uh, Seguin, Perry Sound, and the archipelago are uh, a driving force behind it, but everybody's participating, everybody's cost sharing, and there's just discussions ongoing about uh, involving First Nations and other partners. So it's quite, a, quite an accomplishment. I think uh, the staff and, and the municipalities for the foresight should be uh, recognized. The other interesting thing about the application, and, and Forrest is going to give us a bit of a demonstration, is uh, it's not just a system that municipal staff use to locate water and sewer and other types of infrastructure. It's an application that uh, many different uh, members of the public use, business people and, and, and individuals, and that makes it a, a very compelling uh, application to be supporting. And uh, I'll at this point, I'll turn over to Forrest, who's going to go through and give you a bit of a demonstration of how it works and the functionality and, and uh, things that you can use it for uh, just as a member of the public. Thank you. Turn the microphone on. I think there's 28 nominees, and uh, our our nomination was the only one that was unanimous unanimously selected for uh, by the board, which was very exciting, and uh, I, I certainly felt good about it because it, it is a success story, um, you know. And I I think we all want to emphasize that you know 
the work was you know largely accomplished by you know the west perry sound uh, you know it's the area collaboration that's that's the true success in all of this and with the Mesa award that's what they're looking for they're looking for how can municipalities be more efficient how can they do more with less and how can they get technology not just to the partner municipalities but to the public in general and so just in uh, over the last few months the West Perry Sound has seen an overhaul which uh, those of you who use it regularly probably noticed um, I'll just log in as the public tonight the uh, the mapping is available for all seven area municipalities. It's continually being uh, enriched with new information. Um, for those internal staff with, uh, with a login, there's, there's ownership, sales history, so on and so forth. But there's still a tremendous amount of information for those of the public. Uh, I've had numerous inquiries from the public looking for information just as simple as, where's a property line? Um, you know, and all the while realizing, you know, they're, they're smart devices from which they're, uh, they're viewing this information. The, the GPSs aren't great, but people use it to find their own property stakes all the time. They use it to navigate through uh, trails. Um, I've, I actually <laughs> used it once when I got lost out at Georgian Nordic to find my way back to the lodge. Um, the, the uses are endless. And I, I really, I, I know the uptake is pretty good from the public, but I know that it can be better. I know that we can share this information um, and you know truthfully I, I think my goal is to for us to do something incredible this year with the West Perry Sound again and submit another nomination because it, it, it feels good to be able to celebrate something that we can all share in success um, and like, like Clayton said it, it is truly the municipal collaboration that makes this uh, special. But if anyone wants, uh, any members of council want any help getting the application on your tablet, uh, a smart device, uh, I'd be happy to do so uh, with the stipulation that you tell a friend and we get it, at, we get it out there even more. Uh, it's continually being improved upon and the, the West Prairie Sound firmly, firmly believes in you know, making improvements that people will actually use. So if anyone has ideas, we can certainly float them around and you know we we want it to be the best that it can possibly be okay well congratulations to the team that's been working on this for years to put it together it's great and that's wpsgn.ca and I and I think that's how we got you we stole you from somebody else or whatever yeah. right to uh, <laughs> work on this to keep there you go that's right yeah Okay, that was everything on that one? Okay. All in favor of the report and presentation? That's carried, thank you. Okay, there that page is all done then. Okay, we'll go back to 922. Moved by Councillor Keith, second by Councillor Horn. The council will accept the tender from Toromont Cat for a 2019 Cat. 918M loader in the amount of $171,195, including taxes, delivery, and the trade in of a 2009 Case 521E. This tender being the lowest of four received, and that Council also accept the tender from Tormont Cat for a way scale attachment in the amount of $11,650.30, including taxes and delivery, and the additional funds required to purchase said equipment be taken from the Public Works Culvert Replacement Capital Project. Aha. Uh -huh. Discussion? All in favor? That's carried. There we go. Uh, moved by Councillor Keith, second by Councillor Horn, that Council for the Town of Perry Sound award the tender for a 2019 new model 4x4 half ton pickup crew cab short box for the fire department to Williamson Chrysler Ubic Vehicle Solutions Incorporated in the amount of $45,263.28 including HST and further that the offering of $12,600 for the purchase of the replacement 2000 the replaced 2007 GMC by Gore Bay Gordon Berry Island Fire Department be accepted. 
Any discussion on that one? Councilor Keith? Yes, just for clarification, if this is approved then tonight, uh, um, does uh, uh, the Gordon Bay uh, people, do they come down and pick up the vehicle at some point? Through Mr. Mayor, I haven't worked out those immediate details with uh, Gore Bay on how they want to get it, when exactly they want to get it, all those sorts of things. I'm happy to accommodate, you know, numerous issues within them. They were um, a significantly high bid, and uh, they're a good group of people up there that I'll try to accommodate and work with. Great. Yes. Last follow-up question would be, uh, if this is approved, uh, when would we be probably getting that vehicle? The, the, um, through you, Mr. Mayor, the, uh, the vehicle had to be ordered and will have to be ordered. There are none on lots that actually fit the, uh, the specs. Uh, so it'll probably be about six to eight weeks. Anything further? All in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. Uh, moved by Councillor Keith and seconded by Councillor Horn. The Council hereby adopts the resolution attached to Schedule A. Uh, being a resolution prepared by FCM-ICLEI, Local Governments for Sustainability, Partners for Climate Protection Program. Endorse the Government of Canada's commitment to the Paris Agreement to limit global temperature increase to below 2 degrees Celsius and to pursue efforts to limit the global temperature increase to 1.5 degrees Celsius and commit to reviewing the guidelines on PCP member benefits and responsibilities and then communicate to FCM its participation in the PCP program and its commitment to achieving the milestone set out in the PCP 5 milestone framework and further the Council hereby appoints Forrest Pranger to oversee the implementation of the PCP milestones and be the point of contact for the PCP within the municipality. Discussion? No discussion? Okay, I, I will say that I don't think at the moment that we are members of FCM, this is fine, we can still be members and do this, but I have asked um, our CAO to find out what it does cost for FCM membership. Uh, probably not a bad idea to be part of that organization or at least have a membership. All in favor of this resolution? That's carried. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Keith and seconded by Councillor Horn that bylaw number 2019-6934 being a bylaw to specify the clawback percentages in respect of properties in the commercial class for the 2019 tax year. To be considered as read a first time. All in favor? That's carried. All members in favor of having the second and third readings? That's carried. Uh, moved by Councillor Hor uh, Keith and then seconded by Councillor Horn that the bylaw above mentioned be considered as read a second and third time, passed, signed, and sealed. Any discussion? No? Councillor Bornemann. Well, this is Mr. Beaumont's chance to come before the public and explain what the heck it is that we're doing here and if whether whether or not this is ever going to stop, whether we're ever going to get to the point where our tax uh, levy is uh, good from top to bottom. <laughs> Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thanks, Mr. Warner, for the... Uh, question. Um, just a brief history on this clawback stuff. In 1998, the province of Ontario introduced the tax capping program to protect commercial, industrial, multi-residential properties from significant property tax increases. Uh, this program limits the caps, uh, limits or caps the tax increases at 5%. That's the mandatory one. Uh, municipalities now have the option of using a 10% cap, which we do as a result of these changes in property values. Capping, uh, capping limits landowners from paying the full amount of the taxes based on the assessed value of the property 
as they are paying less tax than if they were calculated their own taxes be using our general rates. Um, when properties experience a decline in the property value, this um, would originally uh, lead to a decrease in property taxes. However, with the capping program, um, we use a clawback to fund the overall short, shortfall in the revenues from the capped properties. So basically what it's doing is, with, for the town of Perry Sand example, we have three properties still in the commercial class that are protected by these, this capping situation. Two of the properties are paying for the one that is re having their taxes reduced. So hopefully, we are phasing it out. Um, with only the three left, it's hoped that next year um, things will change and then everything will be out of cap. So we won't, I won't be sitting here doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Any further discussion on this one? Thank you for your explanation. All in favor? That's carried. Moved by Councillor McCann, second by Councillor Borneman, that bylaw number 2019-6935, being a bylaw to approve the strategic asset management policy for the corporation in the town of Perry Sound be considered as read a first time. All in favor? That's carried. All members in favor of having the second and third readings. That's carried. Moved by Councillor Borneman and seconded by Councillor McCann that the bylaw above mentioned be considered as read a second and third time passed, signed, and sealed. Any discussion? All in favor? That's carried. Moved by Councillor Burden and seconded by Councillor Borneman that bylaw number 2019-6936 being a bylaw to execute an agreement with Street Scan Canada ULC for a road assessment service be considered as read a first time. All in favor? And that's carried. All members in favor of having the second and third readings? Carried. Moved by Councillor Borneman and seconded by Councillor Burden that the bylaw above mentioned be considered as read a second and third time passed, signed, and sealed. Any discussion? Councillor Key. Yes, I just have a couple of questions for a clarification, please. Um, the first one, Mr. Brown, is it seems like this is a three-year contract we're looking at. And on the average, what time, what time of year is the scanning actually done? And basically, is there, because it relates to that, is there how many days in a year or how many hours in a year is it anticipated this would be done per year? Through your worship, the, the scan will actually would be done once. It would, and it would be done uh, very shortly after this is approved by council. Um, they're on, literally on the road all over Ontario. They're actually out west right now. So once they complete that, they'll be back. So it would be within the next several weeks that they would be doing this particular scan for the roads and the sidewalks. Yeah. So just for clarification, what I'm asking then, if it's one time, what is the average? Is it like three weeks it takes? Uh, one day it takes? Rough, rough, please. Through worship, it would be a couple of days. It would be, it would be less than a week. Anything further? All in favor? That's carried. Moved by Councillor Horn and seconded by Councillor Bachman, the bylaw number 2019-6937 being a bylaw to amend the building permit bylaw to establish a process for evaluation of alternative solution proposals and amend the fees bylaw to set the fees be considered as read a first time. All in favor? That's carried. All members in favor of having the second and third readings? That's carried. Moved by Councillor Horn and seconded by Councillor Bachman that the bylaw above mentioned be considered as read a second and third time passed, signed and sealed. Any discussion? Councillor Bornman. 
I'm just hoping Mr. Este can give us the Coles Note version of what we're up to tonight here for those dedicated do-it-yourselfers. <laughs> Through you, Your Worship, um, I was going to say something similar, actually. Um, the uh, building code was changed in 2006 to become an objective-based code. Um, largely the uh, uh, the code prior to that was simply recycled and reused however it is deemed to meet the objectives um, so anybody who's planning on doing building construction uh, if they make an application for a permit and it uh, complies with the, the uh, rules um, they get their permit um, however the objective based bit uh, comes in right at the very beginning and says that uh, um, you can either uh, comply with the prescribed rules or um, you can provide an alternative solution. Um, the, there's actually a, a new table that was added in the code uh, when the objectives came in, which states all of the objectives. And each prescriptive requirement in the code has a corresponding bunch of objectives. So if a person uh, can come up with a way of complying with the objectives of the code, uh, they can make an application for what's called an alternative solution to what's the prescribed things in the code. Um, so a person who applies for an alternative solution is actually asking the person reviewing the plans to do a lot of work. They actually have to compare um, the proposal to the um, code objectives and make an evaluation of whether the uh, proposal is essentially equivalent to the prescribed solutions. So um, that does happen from time to time. Um, one of the things that comes to mind most readily is uh, metal shingles. They're not the kind of thing that's prescribed in the code, um, but there's all sorts of manufacturers who sell things like that. So um, the proposal here is to have a very small fee of $50 if a person uh, proposes to make an alternative solution like that, which is uh, pretty much a slam dunk. Um, they'll get their permit. Um, there's a sliding scale of fees uh, which goes much larger because um, there are uh, certain things in the code that are quite complex, such as exiting systems and uh, time, to, time of egress things. Um, so if a person came in and proposed uh, an alternative solution for something like that, um, we'd uh, levy quite a large fee to cover the costs of our review. And the uh, bylaw also proposes that if we chose to um, have the thing sent out for a peer review, have a third party review the proposal, that the proponent would pay for all of the costs of the third party review. So um, the whole idea of alternative solutions is to um, uh, uh, accommodate people who have uh, unique and innovative thinking, but um, Sometimes things like that uh, entail a little bit of risk, especially if the proponent hasn't considered all of the uh, all of the objectives that the code requirement is intended to achieve. So, um, for something that's re really complex like that, we'd be sending that out for third party review, and we would expect the applicant to cover the cost of that third third party review, um, which would uh, save money for the taxpayers, and still give the possibility of the innovative solution to happen. Okay. Councilor McCann. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm just curious. Uh, I think I know the answer to this, but I, I know that people can't come to you and ask for advice on what they should use, uh, you know, uh, because town staff can't give advice. This isn't about that, the, this, the, the, these alternative methods? No, actually, uh, through your worship, the building code actually prescribes a process for making an alternative solution application. Um, there's certain information that the applicant has to give us which um, allows us to actually review their application. Um, this is intended for uh, very creative or uh, um, uh, innovative solutions to achieve the goals of the building code with public safety, um, energy conservation and things like that. 
Okay, so follow up then. So you basically the peer reviewing and, and, and the, the third parties that are involved actually is what is what uh, this is all about. Then, if I understand correctly, um, third party review is something that we would do um, if we perceived a very significant risk in the um, in the proposal. If a proposal seems straightforward and low risk, we would just approve it for a nominal fee. Okay, thanks. Okay, anything further? All in favor? That's carried. Okay. <clears throat> Moved by Councillor Burden and seconded by Councillor Borneman that bylaw number 2019-6938 being a bylaw to authorize the execution of a memorandum of understanding with Simcoe Muskoka YMCA for the delivery of drop-in recreational program at the YMCA of Perry Sound be considered as read a first time. All in favor? That's carried. All members in favor of having the second and third readings? And that's carried. Moved by Councillor Bornem and seconded by Councillor Burden that the bylaw above mentioned be considered as read a second and third time, passed, signed, and sealed. Any discussion? Councillor Keith. Just for clarification, this is a one year MOU agreement, and then you'll be keeping some stats there to see if this is something that you wish to continue. Is that what I understand, Mr. Bornem? Through your worship, uh, yeah, more or less, this is a, an agreement that's kind of been in place on a trial basis since January of this year. After about three months, uh, both partners decided that we wanted to pursue a formal agreement. Um, so this partnership agreement is for the facilitation of floor curling and pickleball at the YMCA. Um, it's just taken a little bit to get the, the wording correct in the agreement, so that's why it's before council now. Um, and yes, that's correct. This agreement would be something that we would, uh, staff would keep an eye on and kind of monitor throughout uh, the duration of the year and decide if we want to re up again uh, next year. This does have a one year term to it. Okay. Anything further? All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. So we are going to have to move back to closed for, so I will read the, the, the notice uh, for the next council meeting and we will pa have to pass the confirming bylaw for proceedings of council after we come out of closed. So um, prior to adjourning, I'd like to offer the following information to the public regarding the next council meeting. The next regular meeting of council for the town of Perry Sound is scheduled for July 2nd, 2019 at 7 p.m. and will be held in the council chambers, top floor, 52 Seguin Street. Public access to the building is off Gibson Street. All regular council meetings are held at 7 p.m. on the first and third Tuesday of each month, except January and August where only one meeting is scheduled. Regular and special meetings are now live streamed. Please check news and public notices on our website at www.perrysound.ca for instructions to watch live or see earlier council meetings. Agendas, changes to the council meeting schedule, and notices of special council meetings will be posted on the town's website at www.perrysound.ca under news and public notices prior to a council meeting. The public is able to view an electronic copy of the complete agenda with attachments on the town's website. Just search council calendar and the date of the meeting should you wish to receive a combined agenda via email, you may make that request on our website or contact the clerk at the municipal office. The minutes of council meetings will be posted within two days after the council meeting on the town's website and on the bulletin board located in the municipal office entrance. Your TV will continue to air the regular Perry Sound Council me meetings on Saturday at 9.30 a.m. following a regular council meeting. For Kojiko listings, contact www.yourtv.tv. And thank you to everyone. Have a good night. We will take a five-minute recess and then come back into our meeting.